And when it comes to shading, understanding the fundamental ideas of material properties and values are the very important steps to knowing how to shade. And no matter how well a 3D artist is good at recollecting material shading properties, in certain circumstances the saying, the faintest pen is better than the brightest brain comes to play. And today, we're taking a look at a wonderful open source free to use PBR material light and camera value documentation database. This doubles up as both a shader repo and a learning platform. A huge shout out to Anton Palmvist for making this possible and for anyone who likes to take a look at this and see some of the amazing things that this website has to offer. Links to this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. This website is a well thought out website with loads of source research per material and light and at the same time for cameras. Now once you come up to the website, you would notice how simple it looks. Now scrolling all the way from the top, you would notice that we have about 50 plus materials and then you switch over to the light sources and then the camera section. Despite the fact that you have the color values here, the density of each material, you also have the index of refraction. But then, if you want to push this a little bit further, let's say for example we go over to the blood section and click on the drop down, you now have access to the description of what this material looks like, the shading properties, the physical properties, some sources where you can read more about this particular material, and then you can download this material as Material X. And owing to the fact that Material X is now becoming industry standard, if you're working with Unity and Unreal and you're asking, you know, what about those ones? Then there is actually something for you. Because if you click on the drop down, you'd also notice that you can copy the Unreal Engine snippet and also you can copy the Unity shader graph. And once you copy this, you can go over to your notepad, your IDE of choice, and you can paste it. And once you paste it, you can see all the necessary values that you need in creating this particular shader is right here. And this actually starts making a whole lot of sense, especially if you like to take advantage of recreating this. And one thing which I did try is this doesn't just exist as it is, you can replicate these across different DCC apps. All you have to do is just copy the values by simply clicking and this automatically copies and you can proceed to go to any of the DCC apps of choice and you can paste it directly. I mean, that is how simple it is. Click to copy and paste. And that way you can make these same materials for any 3D app of choice that you're working with. There's also something that is quite interesting to see. If you go right here at the top, you would see that we have engine. Now, depending on the rendering engine you're working with, you can change this from default to any of these ones. And if you're working with, you know, like Octane, that changes depending on the index of refraction that Octane uses. If you go over to Keyshot, you notice it changes. And depending on the rendering engine, like we mentioned, and depending on the DCC tool that you're working with, this just simply rocks. And this is not the only place that changes. You can also change the color space to get exactly the color space of what you're going for as this is the color section right here. So we can set this to ACES, we can change the color representation and then we can change the lighting unit itself from photometric to radiometric. And speaking about the lighting unit, if you scroll all the way down and you're thinking about learning more in terms of lighting, then you can find lots of things here. So the light source that you want to create, the temperature required for that, the intensity, and if you'd like to read more, there are tons of sources for you. If you're into cameras, there's also a documentation about cameras. So from the names of the cameras all the way to the sensor size, the aspect ratio of the sensor, the cropping factor, and a couple more reads. So let's say you want to simulate a Canon EOS C500. You can simply come through, click to copy all of these values, paste them into your camera section, and you can get that going. It's also worth mentioning that there's a tool section, which is super dope. So this is also very useful for shading artists that would like to convert sRGB gamma all the way to linear. If you also want to convert your specular to index of refraction, you can do the same thing. And to me, these are the little acts of selflessness that helps make the CG community even better. And for anyone who is into shading, lighting and rendering, this is a definite must have. And you should actually consider checking out this as it holds a whole lot of resources for you. And for those who are also thinking about, you know, places to get tons of free resources, we've covered a lot of them on the channel. And if you're looking for more premium ones right now, the folks at Blender Market are doing a sale. And this is specifically for Blender guys, actually. You can go over to the Blender Market and you can check out some more PBR materials like the Extreme PBR Nexus. This is a very good one. There is also the Santos Library one, which is also super cool. So this is more like it. For those who are thinking about learning more about the core basics and fundamentals of creating physical based materials, or maybe you're into lighting and rendering, and you like to replicate these cameras or these light sources, then this is a website that you should have bookmarked somewhere on your browser. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, a huge shout out to Anton for making this possible. 
And for sure, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.